guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video we're going to be taking a look at the ultimate question of, has ice hockey equipment peaked? Now if you ask the majority of players this, you're probably going to get a gut reaction of yes, but I've always said no. The reason for that is if every year a new product gets released, for the purpose of this video we're going to be looking specifically at ice hockey skates, Every year when a new product comes out, if it's objectively better than what we saw previously, even if it's getting just a little bit better than what we saw last year, we're definitely not at peak. Over the last few years, we have seen so many developments in hockey, but it's safe to say that things have definitely slowed down since the early 2000s. If we look back at the last 15 to 20 years, there has been more advancements in the game in terms of the tech featured and the equipment that we use today, regardless of what level you play at, than there has ever been in the last 100 years of hockey. Now, of course, the differences that we see today versus last year's models aren't as significant as if we were to go back a few years and VS it against what we see now, but things are still improving. A really cool way that you could think about this or an analogy I could use is something that hopefully everyone can relate to, which is an iPhone. If you were to VS an iPhone 4 against an iPhone 13, which is the most up-to-date iPhone at the time that this video is being filmed, it doesn't matter if the person that's looking at these two devices doesn't really use Apple products or doesn't know what an iPhone is, if a person was to spend a little bit of time with these two different devices, they would be able to very quickly summarize which one is the newer one, which isn't the older one, and probably be able to list out a couple of reasons why they think that is, whether it be based on the design or the actual functionality of the product. The exact same thing can be said for hockey equipment. If we look back at things a few years back versus now, the differences are clear as night and day. But where things get a little bit tricky, if we're looking at the analogy of an iPhone, is if we VS an iPhone 12 against an iPhone 13. That's when you have to kind of look at the minutia, the small little details to try and figure out what the actual changes are, because they're not going to be as vast as if you go back a few years versus what we have today in terms of products and features that are available. Now to help with trying to figure out questions like this, or trying to figure out what the tiny little differences are between last year and this year's products, we have an entire series where we look at sticks, we look at skates, and we break that down for you. The purpose of these series, or these videos, isn't to get you guys to buy the latest and greatest from the mainstream manufacturers, it's to highlight the differences and the actual performance differences or benefits when you VS last year's products versus what is about to be released or what is current today. And hopefully by creating these types of videos, it gives you guys as players the information that you need to be able to decide if you want to buy this year's latest and greatest, or if you want to go for last year's top spec and save yourself some money. Because as we've discovered in all of the videos that we've shot previously, newer doesn't always mean better. Not always. Most of the time it does, but not always. So now when we look at skates over the last few years, the time that I've been on the ice myself, the amount of changes that we've seen, if we look at the skate from the base and work our way upwards with blades, we've seen numerous developments in the quality of steel that's used to manufacture hockey blades, the coatings that the blades have, not all of them are just cosmetic, some of them have performance benefits like DLC. We've also seen various different materials being integrated into the hockey blades that we use, whether this has been successful or unsuccessful is not the point, it's the fact that it is an advancement and it does have features that could be argued. And from there we've even seen blades that have cutouts in them that have health benefits and performance benefits. With holders from all the major manufacturers, we've seen them go for essentially toolless uh, quick change holders that allow you to switch out the blade without having to use tools, or you can do it if you're in the middle of a shift, you can quickly jump off the ice, switch out a blade and get straight back on. This wasn't possible just a few years ago. And when we look at the actual boot or the quarter package of the skate, there has been numerous benefits there. If we go back to the first pair of skates I had, which were manufactured from a synthetic leather, nylon and molded plastic, all the way up to date from skates being completely fully composite. There has been so many different advancements from there onwards. We've seen the integration of unibody outsoles from Bauer to one piece skate constructions from CCM to monocoque constructions from VH or AKA True Hockey. There's been a lot of advancements in the actual boots themselves. And even further from that, we've even seen advancements in the toe caps, asymmetrical toe caps that are much lower profile, trying to minimize on any unwanted space inside the skate, tongues that you can choose between different sizes, different thicknesses, CCM with a quick change tongue, so you can go for a thinner tongue, a thicker tongue, asymmetrical tongues, 
tongs that have inserts that allow you to make them stiffer or more flexible so you can have a full leg extension on the ice or get deeper into your strides. Even with the tendon guards having inserts that allow them to be stiffer or more flexible or completely fixed tendons, there has been numerous benefits and features added to the skates that we're using to essentially allow players to perform better on the ice. As we all know, the game of hockey has changed a lot over the years and so has the equipment that we use within the game. As the game evolves, the equipment that we use also has to evolve and the skates that we have today being fully composite and all of the various features that they have in the blades and the holders and the tongues allow players to skate harder, turn sharper and move more dynamically on the ice than ever before. But if we're now to look at maybe the last three or four years, for example, hopefully a lot of you that are watching this video have been on the ice for that amount of time. But even if you haven't been, but you've been through various different skates from different manufacturers, you've upgraded every so often, I'd really like to know if you want to comment down below, let me know what the key feature or performance benefit that you specifically have been able to feel moving from an older model to a newer model pair of skates. I'd be really interested to know that. So please comment down below and let me know what that is. I think it'd be a really good way to kind of figure out as skates are changing, I'd really like to involve you guys watching these videos to give us feedback and also hopefully the manufacturers are gonna be seeing this as well to see what players in the real world are actually being able to pick up on and detect because I have a lot of my own opinions of what I would like to see change in hockey skates as they kind of evolve with the game, but I don't know if that's something that everyone else would agree with as well. So it'd be interesting to see what the key features that you notice are as you upgrade your skates that stand out the most to you. I've personally noticed that when I move from one skate model to another, whether it's for the purposes of a review, an overview, or if I'm getting a new pair of skates myself that I'll be using in scrimmages, the biggest thing I've picked up on is comfort. And that's probably the main thing that I go for because there's nothing worse than knowing that you have a pair of ice skates on or hockey skates on. And what I mean by that is feeling them absolutely obliterating your ankle bones or your instep or any other parts of your foot that are inside the skate. For me, the biggest point of knowing if I'm in the right pair of skates, stiffness and features aside, is gonna be the fact that I don't think about the skate when I'm on the ice. Comfort for me is the most important thing. And of course, having the right fitting pair of skates. Now, here's a question I wanted to pose to yourselves. With the current skates that you're in, or perhaps this, the next set of skates that you're thinking about getting, if you could ask the manufacturer directly to make a change to those skates, to either improve an existing feature, like for example, the graphics on the skate, the color options, or something a bit more performance orientated, like the protection against slap shots, for example, the flexibility of the tongue, the tendon, what changes would you make to that skate if you could have a direct conversation with the manufacturer and they would do that for you? Or, if you'd like to see the manufacturer add a new feature to the skates that doesn't currently exist, what would that look like for yourselves? Make sure you leave your responses down below in the comment section. I'd really love to know what you guys would like to change on a pair of skates if you had the ability to do so. Let me know in the comment section. Now for me, the one feature I would love to see improved on a pair of skates would definitely be the durability, but it's definitely a catch-22 kind of response for me to give because the durability of a skate doesn't necessarily correlate, for example, with the stiffness of the skate. A stiffer skate doesn't mean it's going to be more durable. That is a point that could definitely be argued depending on who's using the skate, how often it's being used. All of these things need to be taken into consideration. But I understand the difficulty from a manufacturing perspective to create a skate that falls into a certain weight category, has a certain stiffness, but still allowing the boot to flex in the areas that it needs to be able to flex in while having maximum durability. This is something that is incredibly subjective based upon how the individual is gonna be using the skate. Because for example, if we look at the ultrasonic skate right now, and you had two players of the exact same build playing at the exact same level, both in a pair of ultrasonic skates of the exact same size. Completely hypothetical situation, but let's look at how that could pan out. One pair of those ultrasonic skates could last a hell of a lot longer than another pair of those ultrasonic skates. Even though the players are roughly of the same ability, the same build, so they're putting the same amount of strain on the skate while they're skating, that doesn't really take into consideration the amount of ice time they're getting, what position they play, how physical they're gonna be getting involved in the game, if they're taking stick slashes, blocking shots, taking skate blade gashes to the side of the body of the skate, all of these things will affect the lifetime that that skate will last for. And this is where things get a bit tricky because one player can have a really good experience in terms of how long a skate lasts and another one can have the complete opposite. It is incredibly difficult for manufacturers to create a skate that will be durable and last multiple seasons for multiple types of people without being able to identify exactly how they play, who they are and what their specific needs are. It's a very difficult thing to do and I do feel that 
sometimes you can kind of get lucky with what you pick and sometimes the luck can go the complete opposite way. Another benefit that we definitely can't go without mentioning is going to be the sizing of a hockey skate and how that's changed over the last few years. Of course, I've touched on this in multiple videos that I'll link down below. When we look at the new sizing that Bauer introduced and also the new sizing that CCM has introduced, where they're looking at a foot and the way it's sized into a hockey skate from a three-dimensional perspective, not a length and width perspective. This was a massive, massive improvement and definitely didn't get as much hype as I feel like it needed to, uh, but I'll link videos down below if you want to see that in more detail. In addition to this, it's going to be the fact that hockey manufacturers have been able to identify different types of players and what skate constructions and features will work best for those specific players. Now this is where the different ranges or families within skate manufacturers comes in, where you have one skate that's designed for example for speed, whereas the other might be designed for for example power and agility. Although these skates are from the same manufacturer, the way they perform and the way they feel on the ice is completely different. And this again is something that we didn't see if we go a few years back. So from here, I'm going to hand off to Tommy, ask him the same question. Over the last three, four years of him being on the ice, he's essentially used all of the top spec skates from the mainstream manufacturers. What does he think has been the standout feature that he's noticed change, if any at all? And most importantly, if he could change or add a feature to a pair of skates, what would that be and why? And make sure you stick around until the end of this video, because at the end of the video, what I wanted to ask you was if you were building or creating the ultimate skate for yourself and you could take features from any skate, any manufacturer, any model from any period of time and attach it to this custom ultimate hockey skate for yourself, what would that look like? We're going to be looking at what blade you'd use, what holder you'd use. In terms of the outsole, would you go for a two-piece construction, a unibody outsole like what we see on the Ultrasonics, or a one-piece boot frame like we see on the FT4 Pros or the AS3 Pros? What tendon support would you use? What tongue would you have? What liners and what eyelet system would you add to the skates? So at the end of the video, make sure you comment and let me know what your ultimate skate looks like. I'm going to be answering what mine will be and I'm also going to be posing the same question to Tommy as well so we can see what he would go for. But make sure you get involved because I would love to see what that looks like from yourselves. And as a side note, could you imagine if we managed to convince one of the major manufacturers to make one of these skates? Who knows? But comment down below and let me know what your ultimate skate would look like. The sky's the limit. Most improvement in skates over the past three, four years. CCM, I have to say, they're changeable blade. They haven't always had that, especially when we first started doing videos. It was the old screws in and out, which, you know, isn't the quickest way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So definitely that for CCM. To be fair, I've always liked Bowers tongues. I've always think they're very protective, but also very stiff. Yeah, I'd probably say how far Bowers' tongues have come, because skate tongues are always going to be an issue. They're, they're never going to be perfect. You're never going to get the protective, but the flexible side. So probably how protective Bowers' tongues have become over the past couple of years. What's changed over the years for skates? If we're talking about the actual boot itself, with CCM, there's not much, if I'm being honest. I mean, they've, they've upped their designs. Some of the, the skates they're bringing out now look absolutely unbelievable. But the inside of the boot is kind of hard to notice the change. I think boots have become a lot easier to break in and to sort of mold around your foot, which is a, a massive deal. I mean, players hated getting new skates because they took months to break in. Now it takes like two weeks and they feel like, you know, a pair of slippers. So that for me is a, a big deal, a very big deal. The stiffness of skates, I mean, I don't think has changed much. Obviously from me playing myself and using the skates as much as I do and going through them as quick as I do, um, they're not any stiffer now than what they were three years ago. I don't feel any different. That aspect of it has just hasn't changed for me and my experience for using skates over the years. So moving on to the tongues. CCM done an absolute game changer with the changeable tongues. I think that's probably one of the best moves they've done, personally, because you know it's player's preference whether they have a thick tongue, normal tongue, thin tongue. So you can change your tongue on the sort of game you play. If you block a load of shots, you can put the thick one in. If you put block none, slim ones, 
you know, I think that's a, that's a big game changer for CCM. If we're talking about who done the best tongues or what was the best tongue I've seen in a pair of skates, I would have to say that the One X's, Bauer really done well with them tongues. They were protective. You had the, the flexibility in them. And it was, it was just a really solid, firm tongue that, you know, if you get hit in the foot in that area, you, you were okay. It was almost like getting hit in the side of the boot. It doesn't really hurt. It stings a little bit and you can carry on playing. Whereas all the other tongues, you get hit in the tongue and that's your shift done. I mean, all players out there will know, you get hit in the tongue, you're going off with a limp. But I think with them Bauer tongues, you, you hardly felt it. Over the past four years, I've had a, a lot of skate which tendons have broke on me. Now that we're talking about tendons, a lot, of, a lot of them have broke on me over the years. You know, taking your boots on and off, you know, using them so much. The, the tendon used to just get really, really weak and really flimsy and then they'd just break. My skates I've currently got and have been using the past year, the tendons have been a lot better. They're not going flimsy as fast. Uh, through, through my experience in playing, I think the tendon is very important. And the fact that they're a lot firmer and a lot stronger nowadays is a massive improvement on skates. The only big difference for me in how the boot itself is, I think it's way easier to break in and mold around your foot nowadays. I thought a couple years ago, they took maybe two, three months to break in. Now, over the past year, it's taken me you know, two weeks, three weeks max to break in and get them fully molded to my foot, which is a big deal. You know, you speak to any player, breaking in a pair of skates was the worst thing ever. You spent two, three months playing hockey, grumpy because your feet were hurting every 30 minutes. You know, whereas nowadays you, two weeks and you're fine. And with the game changing and it being a lot about speed, the fact that your feet ain't hurting because you're breaking in a new pair of skates is a big deal. Now, moving down to the blades of the skates. A couple of years ago, I was breaking a pair of blades every, every like two, three months. Ridiculous amount of blades I was going for a year. I think the past year, they, they, they just don't break as easy. I've had a lot of blades, you get a pass off the, off the foot and that's it, they're gone. But nowadays I think, you can you know, block a shot, you know, blades take a, a lot more, a lot more to break. I think they last a lot longer. Uh, right now I'm using the, uh, the step steels in the CCMs. I like them, they give me a little bit of height. I just think they last a lot longer. I don't have to get them sharpened as often. For me, they're just a really nice set of blades. Whereas over the years, I've used a lot of blades that, you know, needed sharpening every week, broke every two months. So for me, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. You know, some people don't have access to you know, sharpening machines every week. So how, how long the, the blades stay sharp for is a big deal. I know I mentioned that CCM have done a lot with their tongues recently with the changeable tongues and whatnot. I still think tongues need to be a little bit more protective, but you need to try and keep the flexibility in the tongues. Because yes, some players do like a really stiff tongue that doesn't move, but a, some players like myself actually like the flexibility and have a little bit of movement in their ankle when skating. I don't think they've got the happy medium of flexibility and protection in tongues. I think that would be a massive game changer. How has that been for you? Do you think skates are becoming more durable or less durable? Let's, let's talk about that because I know you've obviously used a lot of skates. Like, how have you found it? Do you remember like four years ago, how long was a pair of skates lasting you then? How long are they lasting you now? I think it's a bit of hit and miss, if I'm being honest. I think some skates that I was using back in the day lasted me a year and a half. Some of them lasted me three months. And it's the same now. I mean, Chris will know himself how many skates I go through. You know, he's behind the camera on his head because he's not very happy with it. I go through a lot of skates. My skates take a beating. You know, I've had skates last me a year. I've had skates last me two months. You just don't know. You don't know how much wear and tear they're gonna take. You don't know how much of a beating they're gonna take during the games. It's just a bit of hit and miss and how lucky you are, really. You don't know until it comes to that point where you're like, all right, they're done now. So essentially, no brand is more durable than another. It just depends on that skate and just depends on how the season's been. If I'm being completely honest, through skates that I've used, CCM have been more durable for me. I had a pair of bowers that lasted me two months and that wasn't even during season. That was summer skating once a week, you know, play scrimmage with the team. It wasn't 
intense two training sessions a week and two games a weekend. It was once a week and I broke within two months. Where I ha right now I have FT4 Pros and they've lasted me all year. I love them. I don't, I don't even want new skates if I'm being honest. I know Chris is probably very surprised to hear that behind the camera. I don't actually want new skates. If I had the choice, I would get another pair of them hands down. They are my favorite skates. I love them skates. If you could make your own pair of skates using pieces from all of the skates that you've had really good experiences with in the past, how would that skate look? If we break it down from the quarter package, right, the okay. tendon, the tongue, if you'd go one piece or two piece. So if we're going like a good pair of Frankenstein boots, not the other ones. Going from the CCM blade holder, I'd actually go with the FT outer boot, the design. Love the but love the FT4 design or FT4 Pro design. Same FT4 tongue, uh, tongue, toe. Very com very comfortable. I don't think it's too big, too heavy. But I don't think I'd have a CCM tongue. I would actually have the Bauer One X tongue on those boots. Very protective tongues. Had a bit of flexibility in them. I think they're the best tongues I've ever seen in, in a pair of hockey boots. Tendon. I would go with the 100k tendon and I would, for the inner side of the skate, the actual inside of the boot, I would go with the 100k's. I like how, like, how much they cushion around your ankle. You feel very like supported and very comfortable in the 100k's. I think that's basically my boot. So if we're recapping, Blade Tech Blades, CCM holder, FT4 outer design or FT4 Pro outer design, CCM toe, one X tongue and 100K inner, inner support in the boot and 100K tendon. You know, CCM, if you're gonna, you know, take a peek at this, feel free to try and design them, I'd love that. As always guys, a big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Uh, if this is the type of video that you enjoyed watching and you wanna see more of these, I'd love to maybe look at doing this with sticks, maybe with helmets as well, or gloves. But if you like this, comment down below and let me know if we should do it again with another piece of hockey equipment. A big thank you for getting involved if you commented down below. And make sure you're following on Instagram, Facebook, all of the links will be down below in the video description. And of course, if you like this merch, this is from Ring Suit based in Germany. I'll have their link down below in the video description. And also the hockey tutorial store where you can get a custom hockey tutorial jersey with your name and your number on the back but a big thank you for watching guys thank you for the support and take care till the next one peace